Hisham, my Velaya. He has his own relation with God and the Prophet and the rest. What does it mean? It means that my relation of Velaya can be complete without involving him. It's very important idea. So, as a good believer, I have to do my best to strengthen my relation with God, with the Prophet. But that is my personal business. How much my brothers and sisters are involved in this? Maybe nothing at all. This is something that I believe is mentality of many people. If they do something with their brothers and sisters, they just do it as a duty or obligation or as something that can strengthen their relation with God. The relation is one-to-one -one, and others are not included, but how you deal with them can affect your relation with God. But my understanding is that Velaya is the relation between all members of the community of faithful with God. One relation. Relation of all members of community with each other and with God, the Prophet, and Imams. So, my relation with God is not complete without sorting out my relation with my brothers. That is part of Vedaya. So, it's like having tasbih, rosary. Every seed in rosary is connected to other seeds in an equal way. I cannot say I want to get connected to the you know, chief seed and don't bother about the rest. Every seed must be connected to all other seeds and all together with that chief seed. Or like, for example, the relation that we have between organs and cells of body and brain or heart. My hand cannot say, I want to be connected to heart and brain and I don't bother about the rest of body. What is important for me is just to be connected to brain and heart. No, it's impossible. Unfortunately, we perhaps sometimes have not thought carefully about what the Prophet ﷺ said. When he said, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمَنِينَ فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ وَتَرَاحُمْهِمْ وَتَعَاطُفِهِمْ كَمَثَلِ جَسَدْ The example of the believers in their love, affection, sympathy is like one body. We normally... Read this quickly and pass. We don't stop and, you know, digest. What does it mean that you are like one body? It means that you are so much connected with each other and your destiny so much depends on destiny of the rest of the body of the faith that you cannot survive without making sure that the rest of body is safe and sound. So, the relation of Velaya, according to this understanding, does not repeat with the change of people. It's one relation that involves others. Not that I have one Velaya, and he has another Velaya, then another believer has another Velaya, and these are parallels. And we only meet in God. No, we don't only meet in God. We meet also in the bottom, not just in the top. So this is very important. I have seen many people that they are really good, very pious, dedicated. They want to serve, you know, <coughs> God. They want to serve religion, they want to serve people. But 
normally they do it individually. They first try with working with some other people, but then for some reason they get frustrated and say, let's forget others, I do my little bit. The only time they are ready to work with others is if those others are ready to listen to them. Because they think it's a waste of energy to bring some me, someone equal to me, in my level or higher, then I have always to question and argue, I know this is headache, it's better to forget teamwork. I do something, and if there are people who are ready to work with me, which means under me, then it's okay. This is what is the mentality of many people. And therefore, you very hard to find people who are very established and have respect and support of the community <coughs> to work together. It's not very common. When we are very young or when we are, for example, not that much established, it's possible. But then, I, when I reach the point that I can manage to do my things alone and I have enough support, then I don't spend time on making another person part of the team. Why? Because I think that I can serve God alone. It's possible. I can strengthen my velaya without involving others. And this is absurd. According to this understanding of velaya that I'm going to share with you, it's impossible. Your relation with God very much depends on your relation with the rest of the body. You cannot say, I only want to focus on God, forget others. No. God wants you also to be concerned about the whole team, about the whole body. So this is an idea that I have been trying to share with as many people as I could in the last four or five years. And I also studied this you know, with many friends, you know, students, teachers, some of my you know, great teachers. And thanks to God, it seems that no one questions but everyone said this is new. But I don't think anyone you know, so far has questioned this. Because when we mention all the evidence, it becomes very clear. This is not something ambiguous. The only problem is that we haven't achieved this level of velaya among ourselves. Okay, let us start with some... Uh, passages from some of the hadith and some of the dua, supplications, du'as, <coughs> and then we go back to the Quran. And what I'm going to say is something which would be very obvious for any Shia Muslim, but I don't think anything would remain, you know, perhaps questionable for non-Shia Muslims, because I think it's so un, you know, clear that even non-Shia would accept but for Shia, it becomes crystal clear. Because, you know, we have this idea of Velaya continuing after the Prophet in Imams, and, you know, we have the living Imam, uh, you know. So, for us, it becomes very clear, but I think it will be the same for other Muslims. We have this idea that the Quran says, All the people have God as their master. You know, you, if you want to study the issue of Eli in the Quran, you find three categories, three sets of verses. In some verses, God says, He is the master of everyone. He's the Vali of everyone. In some places, God says, He is the Vali of the believers. And those who are not believers, the arrogant people and Tawut is their vali. And in some places, God says he is the guardian of the believers and those who have no faith have no vali. If you are not studying the Quran properly and you just read one set of these verses, you make a conclusion which is not complete. So some verses says that God is vali for all people. Hmm. Believers or unbelievers, the same. Some says God is the vali for the believers, 
And those who have no faith, their wali is tawud, is, you know, devil and arrogant people. And some says God is the wali of believers, and those who have no faith have no wali. So there are three categories of the verses. After a study, it becomes clear that God is the one who has velaya in the sense of generative sovereignty over all human beings. So his wali in a takbini sense, in a generative sense, for all kafir, mu'min included. But then, God wants us to choose him as our wali voluntarily. So he says, although I have created you, and I have you in my control, I don't want to impose myself on you. It's up to you. You can adopt me as your wali, or you can adopt the tyrants and unjust and you know, mischief makers as your wali. And this is where the Quran says, Allah waliyu alladheena amanu yukhrujuhum minna dhulumati ila nur waladheena kafaru awliyaahum al-tahood yukhrujunahum minna nur ila dhulumat. So, some people adopt God as their wali, some people adopt others as their wali. For example, those who followed Pharaoh, Pharaoh, their wali is Pharaoh. Those who followed Namrud instead of Abraham, their wali is Namrud. And then there are verses which says that only believers have wali. Those who don't have belief, they don't have value. What does it mean? It means that those that they have taken as their wali cannot benefit them. They cannot do anything for them. On the day of judgment, the Quran says that he will, God will ask every group of people to join their leaders, their imams, their guides in dunya. Some people have followed prophets, Moses, Jesus, Abraham, Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some people have followed Pharaoh, Namrud, these type of people. On the day of judgment, we all will be asked to assemble ourselves According to our leaders in dunya. Who was your leader in dunya? Then you will be asked to stand behind him. This is in Surat Nahl. And I think it's 90... Sorry. This is Surat Esra. Surat Nahl. Nahl will talk later. Surat Esra number 71. Father? We ask every group of people to join their imam. And imam here means leader. Can be good or bad. People who followed Pharaoh, they will stand behind Pharaoh. He will lead them, but he will lead them to fire. He has misguided them in dunya, so he will guide them to fire. Now there is a very important point here. Is this relation of wilaya which exists between Pharaoh and his people something that can benefit them? No. Indeed, Pharaoh would try to disassociate himself from the people who followed him. The people who were followed, they want to disassociate themselves from those who have followed them. And also, 
the people who followed Pharaoh and people like Pharaoh, when they see these people don't help them and indeed they want to disassociate themselves, they say, Laita lana karratan, fanatabarra minhum kama tabarra minna. They say, we wish we had another opportunity to go back to dunya and distance ourselves from them as they are distancing now. So it's too late to distance yourself at that time. They say, we wish we had another opportunity to go back. So, neither the leader, like Pharaoh, nor the community or those who followed him can help each other. And therefore, they become enemies of each other. There is no help. And this is why God says, La mawla lahum. Means no one to help them. No one to care for them. No one to bother about what is happening to them. They don't have anyone. But those whose wali is God, and they have followed prophets and holy people. Then God cares for them. The prophets care for them. They love each other. They don't disassociate themselves from each other. And they will go together. The prophet would not forget us and say, I want to go quickly to heaven, you know, then you sort out and join me. They will go together. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, commenting on this verse from Surah Isra. He said, Allah tahmadun Allah. Don't you praise God? Don't you thank God? When God asked every group of people to follow the one that they had his wilaya, so this is the whole community having wilaya together of one person. So it's one relation. وَدَعَانَا إِلَىٰ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ God then will ask us to join the Prophet and you will join us. Then where do you think you will be taken? When we join the Prophet, not Pharaoh, not Namrud. When we join the Prophet, where will we be taken? By the Lord of Kaaba, we will go to heaven. But if we can prove that we have been part of that community, it's not something that can be solved by name or just declaration or claim or how I look. No, it's a matter of reality and truthfulness. If I can show by my character that I am a follower of true leaders, of divinely appointed leaders, then I can join them. So, this is a very important Quranic idea that on the Day of Judgment, people after coming as individuals, they will be asked to assemble and then they will go to heaven or hell as groups, not individuals. In Surah Zumar, God says those who have taqwa, who have piety, will be head, heading and will be led towards paradise in groups, not individuals. Individualism will finish. <laughs> there would be community, there will be group. Also those who have no faith and having no faith means you know those who are arrogant, deny the truth, reject the truth, oppose truth. These also will be going together. So initially they come individuals, furada, but then you go in groups. Okay, so you see the re relation of Velaya is something which even manifests itself on the Day of Judgment. Now let me give you some quick references. In one of our du'as which we are recommended to read every morning and, you know, this is from the sixth Imam and the sixth Imam said that if you recite these du'a for 40 days, you will be given the blessing of joining the 12th Imam, the Imam Mahdi, who will establish the earth with justice. 
So there is a passage in that dua when we want to send salutation to the Imam. So we ask God the Almighty to send salutation to Imam. And this dua is recited early morning. So imagine it's early morning right after saying your prayer and maybe you are sleepy or you want to go back to bed or you have something to do. But the Imam says, when you want to send salutation, don't think only about yourself. Don't say, oh God, please send my salutation to my leader. You must say, and jami'il mu'minina wal mu'minat. Oh Allah, please send salutations on behalf of all believing men and women. Don't be selfish in your prayer, just pray for yourself. Or ask God to send salutation only on your behalf. And jami'il mu'mineen wal mu'minat. All believing men and women. How many millions of them are there in the world? You have to remember them. And not only that. Fi mashariq al wa magharibha. Those who live in the east or in the west. I live perhaps in the Middle East, but I have to remember those who believe in China or Mongolia or Indonesia or those who believe in US and Canada or any part of the world. Especially if we remember that when this was taught by the sixth Imam in the second generation, you know, century, Muslim community was very much in the Middle East. At that time, it was not spread all over the world. But Imam knew what is going to happen when we have a condition that in every corner of the world, now you have the community. <coughs> Extra emphasis. Those who live in mountains, those who live in deserts, on the, you know, for example, plains, we have to remember them. Those who live in land, those who live in overseas or on islands or someone is on a boat or traveling in a ship, we have to remember them. And then after that you say, وَعَنِّي وَعَنْوَالَ دَيَّةِ And then you say, on my behalf, on behalf of my parents. What type of mentality is this? It is very clear that they want to tell us that you have to start your day with remembrance of your leaders and the community. So always remember that you are a member of a community. You are not just one person who lives, you know, separate from others in this world. You are a cell in a body. You are an organ in a body. You are part of a community. In Ziyarat Aminullah, this is a recitation that we have uh, for, and it is one of the most authentic pieces that we recite when we want to visit holy people. And at the end of this ziyara, this is a very beautiful ziyara and we ask many things from God. Allahumma ja'al nafsi mutma'innatan biqadarik, radiyatan biqadaik. Very beautiful ideas. At the end, I'm just quoting at the end, we say, Anta ilahi wa sayyidi wa mawlai. O Allah, you are my Lord, my Master. I worship you. Okay. Now you want to make your request. What should you ask from God? You are my Lord. You are my master. I worship you. Most of people, if it is their choice, if they are not trained properly, they say, okay, now this is a good time. I ask for a good car, a good house, a good wife or husband, good children, good job, good salary. I want my books to be sold. So these things. But they tell us no. It's very good to ask everything from God. You know, God told Prophet Musa, even ask me for the salt of your food. But not just salt of the food. Ask everything from me. Especially the good for the community, the public good. So we say, Anta ilahi wa sayyidi wa mawlai, li awliya. 
please forgive all members of this Wilaya connection, all people who believe in this link, <coughs> all members of community. I don't want to be only forgiven myself. You want everything good for others. You see how important it is and how spirituality and so society are integrated. If you are a real a spiritual person, whatever you ask, you ask also for others. You know, if someone says, you can go and see the king or president and make one request, what can you do? You can say, okay, I make one request only for myself. But if you are clever, you make one request for everyone. You can say, I want one house for myself, or you can say, I want house for every member of the society. It's one request. We have to be clever. We have to know how to be clever, but not in worldly gain, in the spiritual. So whenever there is opportunity, ask for others. Include others. And, you know, we have many hadiths that when you ask for others, the chance of yourself receiving becomes more. But you don't do it for this purpose, of course. You want it genuinely for everyone. Please forgive all the people who have this idea, this faith, <coughs> believe in God. Oh Allah, please protect us from our enemies, not protect me from my enemies. I don't have any personal enemy. I will explain later that you as a Muslim must not have any enmity with anyone as a person. You don't have personal problem with anyone. Even if people you know, wrong you and annoy you, this doesn't make them your enemy. If there is any enemy, it's the enmity, enemy of the whole community. It's the enemy of God, enemy of Islam. Otherwise, I am not that significant that because someone is not kind with me or someone who doesn't you know, treat me well, I fight. If I have any energy, I save it for the good of the public. So I don't bother what people do only with me. As long as everything else is okay, I tolerate. But if that wrong doing concerns others as well, that's another issue. <laughs> Please make them so busy that they don't have time and energy to create troubles for us. Make them busy with their own affairs so that our enemies... So you see, we want to defend ourselves. We are not aggressive. We want to protect ourselves. We ask God to protect us from our enemies. My concern is that the word of truth should prevail. And bring the word of falsehood to the lowest. So this dua, this prayer shows that in the most pious and spiritual time when you are with God and you feel connected, you must be concerned with the good of the community. If you are only thinking about yourself, you are not a good believer. You are just a businessman or woman who is only thinking and you know, calculating how much I can gain from God just for myself. I don't want anyone else. I just want myself. Unfortunately, this is something that you know, we have to discuss in maybe inshallah sometime in the future. Unfortunately, it's, we have two types of love for God. There are people who love God genuinely and therefore they make themselves in the way that God wants. There are people who love God because that suits them. So they make God in the way that they want. So they do their own things in the name of God. <clears throat> Instead of doing godly things in the name of God. Therefore, there are people who want to possess God 
and there are people who are possessed by God. You find most of the people who claim they love God, they are the people who want to have monopoly over God. They want to own God. This is my God. Don't talk about God. It's not yours. It's mine. This is ridiculous. This is childish. You want to use God as your own property? If you are really a lover of God, then you must become like God. You must do things only for promotion of God. Not for promotion of yourself or your group or party. So, this is my concern. In one of our ziyarats, which is something that we recite, especially in the months of Muharram, you know, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, uh, the grandson of the Prophet, uh, with 72 members of uh, the household of the Prophet and you know friends, they were killed in <coughs> Karbala uh, uh, on, the tenth, on the day of Ashura in the 10th of Muharram. So this is why we mourn you know, these days. So in one of the things that we say to Imam Hussein alayhi salam, we say, Ya Abu Abdullah, Inni salimun liman salamakum, wa harbun liman haradakum. O Imam Hussein, I am at peace with whoever is at peace with you. Sometimes we say, Inni salimun lakum, I am at peace with you. This is too little. I am at peace with whoever is at peace with you. If I have difficulty with anyone, it's because that person is fighting you. I don't have any personal problem with anyone. And this is something very difficult. Can I say honestly as a Muslim, to the Prophet وسلم, that, O oh Prophet, I am at peace with whoever is at peace with you. How many people can say this? I don't have any enmity, any hatred towards anyone who is at peace with you. It's very difficult. If, if this is the case, so why we fight each other? Why we are divided? Why we destroy the each other. If you look at the cases that we have, both sides love the Prophet. Both sides, they're at peace with the Prophet. But they haven't got this mentality that it's not a matter of whether you love the Prophet or not. It's a matter of whether you are ready for the love of the Prophet, love everyone who loves him. Are you ready to be at peace with everyone who is at peace with him? Or you want to do your own selfish things and you say, I love the Prophet. How can I say I love a father and beat his children? No matter how good or bad they are. It's impossible. If I love someone, I respect the children. I cannot say I love you and then I slap or you know, beat his child. It's impossible. Enni selnumun leman salamakum. And this is repeated twice, and the second time says, So I don't have time to mention. In another place, you know, I just bring from different du'a so that you realize that it's very common. You know, we have this du'a in Nudbe, which we recite on Fridays. So in this du'a, uh, we reach a point that we feel very connected very close to the Imam, so we try to talk to him. So, we say to Imam many things. One of the things that we say is that, هَلْ مِنْ مُعِينًا فَأُطِيلَ مَعَهُ الْعَبِيلَ وَالْبُقَى Is there any helper with whom I can cry longer? Look at this beautiful concept. Even for crying, you must look for helpers. Don't say, I want to cry alone. Yes, sometimes cry alone, but not all the time. 
that when there is helper, you can cry longer. You, you, some of you know Arabic. It doesn't say فَأَبْكِي مَعَهُ It says فَأُطِيلَ مَعَهُ الْأَبِي It says, is there any helper with whom I can cry longer? Not I can cry with him. So if I can cry for five minutes when I am alone, when you are with me, I can cry for ten minutes. And this is a symbol for everyone.